Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, Markus Nettler, my name. I'm from Bonn and uh, involved in the GrassGIS development already for a long time, like uh, 97, coordinating the stuff and 93 being a user, started at university exploring the software and uh, the session today is about uh, how to analyze environmental data with uh, GrassGIS. I didn't prepare slides for today because I'm just back from the Phosphor-G conference in, uh, in Bucharest. But I think you can see it like this as well. So um, what I prepared, is the font size okay for everyone or should I enlarge it? Okay, maybe like this. Um, so we have different sections. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, who is already uh, familiar with uh, GrassGIS in a way. Maybe you can give a sign. Okay, so we are not alone. There are <laughs> quite some. Uh, still, uh, since not everyone is familiar with that, there's a chapter on, on uh, GrassGIS basics. Uh, there are a few concepts you have to know, not too many, but uh, just a few, like two or three, and then uh, everything will go smooth if you are already familiar with GIS in general. Otherwise, just read what's written here. Uh, we will go through that in our session today. Then I brought an extract of the European Climate Assessment data set, uh, which is a time series, a daily time series of climatic data starting in uh, on 1st of January uh, 1950, so it's really a long one. Um, and we will do some data aggregation, statistics, time series, processing, and so forth on it. The next chapter is uh, doing classification with uh, machine learning, using, in this case, the random uh, forest classifier. There's an interface. It is using Python for that. Uh, the GRASS software, it is related to an external Python software and uh, still it is integrated like an add-on, so it feels like a GRASS command to you. And eventually uh, we have linear and multiple regression examples. This is rather simple, but the idea is to give you an overview of what's possible and then for your own research you can naturally do more. Uh, this also includes some interfacing with R because you have uh, the bidirectional possibility of exchanging data, doing processing uh, in GRASS, send data to R, do processing there, get retrieve results back and so forth. So the idea is, of course, to use the best tools you can have and to interface them as much as possible. And finally, uh, probably we won't have time for that, but those being interested in uh, using Python and GRASS, there's a very easy to use extension called uh, GRASS session. Like this you can uh, use uh, R, uh, GRASS in a Pythonic way, which means that you can write your scripts, you can call functionality uh, of GRASS.js where it suits you and uh, return back to your workflow. So it is not needed to only work in GRASS itself. Yeah, I wrote uh, two lines about myself. Um, for those not knowing me, uh, I'm, I'm from Germany, but I was working for 15 years in research in Trento in Italy and then moved in 2016 uh, to Bonn uh, in order to uh, co-found with two other uh, colleagues, Mundialis, that's an open source company. And yeah, we are meanwhile luckily overwhelmed with work, which is nice. And uh, we also work in research, so we do H Horizon 2020 projects, some German research projects. We are part of the consortia there, but we, of course, do also B2B, uh, which is business to business, means uh, we are working uh, for different companies like uh, German Telecom. I had a presentation at Bucharest about uh, fiber optics planning. Uh, we are developing together with other companies an open source solution for the German Telecom and, of course, it is also GRASS.js based. There's a second uh, set of talks uh, from my side about Actinia cloud processing. I think I will uh, show that in the 
respective plenary, but uh, it is uh, using GraphJS as a backend. So if you come today, you will naturally be uh, have an advantage to follow the other section. So just, I don't know how many minutes I have. Okay. Um, just to look into the details, quickly, just goes going through. Um, some GrassGIS basics. I'm also uh, often point to not reinvent the wheel, pointing to uh, different um, web pages here. One example, just to show you the academic impact of this software, of course, inspired by the R project, where they did something similar. Uh, we came up with the grass development team page here. You can see at time 34,000 citations, luckily searched in an automated way. And uh, yeah, if you are interested in looking at what has been published so far uh, or what is using grass and so on, uh, there's a way to find out. Yeah, the concepts of uh, region and so on I will introduce in this um, in this session then. We have some database structure to know about. This is also relevant for this cloud processing. I will show uh, in, uh, soon in the other uh, presentation. Data workflow and so on. And a couple of uh, commands we are looking into. The second part is the analysis of the climatic data. Again, I use an extract of an of uh, this ECAT data set plus some other data and uh, why extract because they are pretty heavy. I think they are now about 30,000 layers in a single file being distributed and uh, just to be a bit faster, um, yeah, we will, we will just use this subset here. I put all the commands we use here. You can also use the graphical user interface as well. So if you are scared of command line, but probably you are not because uh, it is not that dramatic and it's giving you a lot of advantages. Um, then uh, you find the details here, all the different steps, and then we go through and do some uh, statistical analysis on top. So no, I don't want to show this in detail now. Image classification with machine learning. This is naturally not a machine learning course, but it's just using some uh, tools here in order to uh, reproduce the Köppen-Geiger um, classic, uh, climatic classification. Yeah, you are, have probably heard of it or you're using it yourself. This is something you can derive yourself uh, defining some rules. The rules are pretty complex. Um, we will not uh, retrieve them here, but uh, we do some simplified way. The regression, yeah, linear multiple regression you may be familiar with. Here are some examples. Um, the interface to R we uh, have uh, nicely explained in the wiki. There's a wiki of uh, Grass GIS. And here you find installation for Windows, Linux, and so on. Uh, and the use, different use cases, set of examples and uh, useful links. The real expert is sitting over there, so I will not dive into details here. Um, and eventually, connecting Grass and Python. Um, there are more than, I think, 70 scripts and a uh, major part of the, or not major, but a significant part of the library is written in Python. In Grass, we just made the migration to uh, Python 3, which was uh, overdue. Uh, the version 7.8 is coming with Python 3 support, and uh, since then we hope to, uh, yeah, to be compliant again with the rest of the world because Python 2 is end of life, uh, more or less end of the year, and uh, that was a necessary change. And I'm talking here about uh, 270,000 lines of Python we had to check. So that is not anything which you do uh, in an afternoon. Yeah, Grass Session, you can just uh, install this with pip. Pip install Grass Session, and then you can uh, import a few libraries, and then you can go ahead and do your processing here. Uh, we show some examples. 
Here are some more details as well, and um, that is this part here. Yeah, with that, I would like to conclude. Um, hope to see you all later in the session, and floor back to Etza. Thank you. Thank you.